This video is sponsored by Nintendo Canada. So this is the Nintendo Switch OLED model and I've been using it since it was released in October 2021. I thought this would be a good time to talk about my experience plus offer some tips and tricks to new and current Nintendo Switch owners. Now when you first buy the Nintendo Switch OLED model, it comes in a box and you get a bunch of stuff with it. Joy-Con controllers, a Nintendo Switch dock, and a bunch of cables to hook it up to a TV. The beauty about this is it's dual purpose design for both handheld and docked modes. This is why I love the Nintendo Switch. It's so different from any other gaming console out there. It's one of the only devices that offer three gameplay modes to enjoy. For example, there's TV mode where you have it directly connected to a TV via the Nintendo Switch dock, which gives you the biggest screen possible. There's tabletop mode, which allows you to use the kickstand on the back to place it on a desk then you can detach the Joy-Con controllers and play it at a distance. The third gameplay mode is handheld mode, where both Joy-Con controllers are connected to the Nintendo Switch OLED model and you're using the entire device in your hand. Now, if you decide to buy a digital version of the game, you can do it through the Nintendo eShop directly on the Nintendo Switch, like I have here or you can purchase it through the Nintendo Store online using your computer or smartphone. The benefit of buying a game digitally is that it stays with you no matter what. So if I like lose my Nintendo Switch OLED model and buy a new one, the game is tied to my account and I can just re-download it. It also doesn't take up physical space. So if you wanna keep things nice and tidy, digital is the way to go. But physical games do have a couple of advantages. One, if you're a huge collector, you can have it on your shelf, show it off and keep it forever or you can trade games. So if you have a buddy who has a game that you wanna play, you can swap games with him or her, and then when you're done, switch back. But honestly, the one thing that I truly love about the Nintendo Switch OLED model is it allows me to game in small spurts. So for someone who has a very busy schedule like I do, with work, kids, and life responsibilities, it's hard for me to dedicate a lot of time to gaming in a specific location. By keeping this in my bag at all times, whenever I have a bit of downtime and wanna do something, I can pull it out, play for five or 10 minutes, and get those quick little moments in. This is something that's really hard to do with most other consoles. Now this brings me to Nintendo Switch Online. This is a membership service. It costs $24.99 Canadian for a one year membership. But the benefits are huge, especially if you play a lot of multiplayer games online and you want your data to be backed up to the cloud. For example, I have the Nintendo Switch OLED model, but I also have the Nintendo Switch Lite. I started playing Metroid Prime Remastered on the Nintendo Switch OLED model. And then when I got onto the plane, I started using the Nintendo Switch Lite. I wanted to travel as light as possible because the Nintendo Switch Lite is very pocketable. It was just easier to carry. When I got onto the plane, my data was already backed up into their data cloud service, allowing me to continue exactly where I left off. But if you pay $63.99 for the entire year, you get access to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. This means you get everything I originally mentioned, plus the expansion pack stuff. So I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and right now I get access to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. This DLC gives me the opportunity to play 48 newly added courses throughout the entire year. This keeps Mario Kart 8 Deluxe feeling fresh. Now you don't have to go out and buy accessories to change the way you game on this, but it will offer small improvements that I feel like a lot of people can benefit from. One of them is a micro SD card, which you can then use to add more storage. The Nintendo Switch OLED model has 64 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough for six to seven big games. But if you want to travel around with a very extensive library, and most of the games you are purchasing are going to be digital, then I highly suggest picking up a micro SD card. Nintendo does have a partnership with SanDisk and this is what it looks like. I picked up a 256 gigabyte card and this just gives me so much storage to play with. The second accessory is if you travel a lot. I definitely recommend picking up a Nintendo Switch carrying case. There's a variety of different styles to choose from. This is what mine looks like. It doesn't add that much more bulk to the entire device. In fact, it's very plush for its size, so it will keep your device protected. Plus, it comes with this little flap that has a pocket for your cables, plus five slots for physical cards. And in the event that you don't want to use the kickstand, you can just flip this thing backward and it will allow your Nintendo Switch OLED model to be placed in tabletop mode. The third accessory is super optional because you can theoretically just detach the Joy-Con controllers and place them in the Joy-Con grip if you want more of a traditional controller experience. But if you want the best physical controller for the Nintendo Switch OLED model, I highly recommend the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. This thing feels 
absolutely fantastic. I personally prefer a traditional controller like this one. I think it just feels better in the hand. The buttons are nice and clicky. Everything just works perfectly. And the last accessory is picking up a second Nintendo Switch dock. This really depends on your situation. For me, I value this big time because I bring my Nintendo Switch from home to work and just having a dock here at work allows me to quickly connect it instead of bringing my original dock here and hooking up all the wires again. It just adds extra time that you can definitely save. The big question, what games should you start off with first? Well, I'm playing five games right now and I think they're a great selection for most people to start off with. The first one is the recently released Metroid Prime Remastered, a first person version of Metroid. And they absolutely nailed it. I just finally got the plasma beam and this allows me to go into new areas in each zone that I couldn't before. As I progress through the game, it just gets harder and harder. The graphics look fantastic, the puzzles are tricky enough, and it's not super duper hard, but it's hard enough to keep you on your feet. The second pick is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is an open world game and I absolutely love the way Nintendo did this. It feels completely different from any other Zelda game I've played in the past. You still have a lot of that nostalgia there because you're playing a Zelda game after all, and it still feels like a true Zelda game, but the direction they went with this is incredible. This is an open world where there are no specific rules. You don't have to follow a linear approach. If you wanna go in one direction to grab a bunch of quests and do them in whatever order you want, you have the option to do that. There's just this feeling of freedom, and I think they absolutely nailed it. Plus, on May 12th, Nintendo is releasing The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which follows the same format. This is obviously a newer version of Breath of the Wild, but it's gonna take some of the same mechanics and offer you an open world experience with new storylines. I'll most definitely be playing this one when it comes out. Now, if you want something a bit easier to chew on, maybe something more multiplayer, go for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This is a game I play with the family. It doesn't require a lot of skill to learn. There's a very low skill gap and anyone who picks it up is gonna learn all the controls in like 30 seconds. There's a lot of fun here. You can throw down banana peels to cause the other races to slip out. It's just a fun game to play with the family. Another great multiplayer game is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is something I personally play with my son. It's the only game that he consistently beats me at. Like literally, the only one. He is just so good at it. No matter which fighter I choose, he ends up beating me all the time. I don't know, I'm just not good at this game, but I think the joy for me is just spending time with him and also watching him get a kick out of unlocking a brand new fighter. The final game that I suggest for now is Splatoon 3. Another great multiplayer game. This definitely needs a Nintendo Switch online membership so you can play it online. The idea is to have this fun and unique experience where you get to compete online against players from across the world. So hopefully some of these tips and tricks will help you out if you just purchased a brand new Nintendo Switch OLED model. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below, plus links to all the accessories and games that I talked about will be in the description. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.